Hey everyone, Eric here. And today I'm going to share with you three different ways to create phased or built up animations using SketchUp native tools. So real quick explanation, what do I mean by build up? I think, uh, I hope it's self-explanatory, but sometimes it's not. So sometimes you see like a model that almost reveals itself. So it's like you start at the base and then, you know, this sort of things kind of come in or they build or they fade or they transition in. And I want to look at a way to do that. In fact, I want to look at more than one way to do that using just native tools here in SketchUp with the model that you see behind me. So let's just go ahead and get to it. All right, this is the model I'm using. It's a simple house. And if I open up my tags and I turn on color by tag, you can see that it's organized fairly, fairly simply. So this is kind of what I mean by build up. What I want to do is build up from the ground. So if I turn the architecture or the building off, and if I turn the deck, sorry, not the deck, that's just the order that it goes in. It's not the order that it builds up in, and that's alphabetical order. Turn the furnishings off, and then all of a sudden you can see like we start with the ground plane and we're going to build our way up. Now I'm not going to use the color by tag. That was just to kind of show you how it's organized. So now what's what are some different ways uh, to do that? You've probably seen this trick before, but I'm going to toggle my section cuts on and I'm going to double click this section here. And then I'm going to double check my, I think I need to open up styles for this because sections are actually managed in styles. So if you say show section cuts, just want to make sure that that is defaulted here so that you can, um, so they'll show. So for some reason, if they don't show, just make sure that you turn them on and that you update your style to reflect those. So you can see I've got two section cuts. One way to do this is you could delete this one and you can just copy this one up. You want to basically copy it up above. Doesn't really matter where it is necessarily. It just needs to be above the building. And then I've got this lower one and I've got this upper one. So when you have this start section here, what we're going to do is we're going to turn those toggle. We're going to turn the toggle of the sections off and I'm going to make sure my style doesn't actually show those. And then this is where you want to check things. If that was a little bit slow under model info, obviously for doing an animation, in this case, I'm starting with the section. So I want to, um, I'm going to let that do the reveal, right? So if, if 10 seconds is too long, I can drop that number down to six or five or whatever I want it to be. And then you basically create another tag. So the other tag is going to show the end animation. So for example, if I toggle my section cut on, this one would be the active cut. And then I would update this. And then if I go back to the beginning, you can see now it's doing it in reverse. It's going all the way down. And if I toggle my section cuts on, you can see this one here is the active. It's already the active cut. So that's an active cut. That's an active cut. I have two scenes, one showing each cut. And that is pretty, pretty cool. Now, because both the camera path animation and the section reveal are done natively here in SketchUp, all you have to do is just come over here when you're ready to export. In this case, I've exported this as an animation and I have this right here. Now, this is pretty cool. Again, you can loop it. You can go backwards. That's the first way, the first one of three ways. And I think that's the quickest, to be honest with you, uh, because it's all you need is two scenes and you need two section cuts. And once uh, so if you, you don't have to do the you don't have to do the camera pan, if you want to leave it there, you just each scene has the same camera location and then you could do the reveal without the pan. So now let's look at it a different way. Let's look at what would happen if I started with a blank, uh, just a blank scene. Basically, you can see in my tags, I've turned everything off. And then I've created four scenes that basically just control visibility. So one for the deck, one for the furniture, and one for the architecture. So now I wanted to build up, but instead of cutting a section where it's revealing it using the section cut, it's actually just bringing, sort of popping the objects in. Now, if I just did a straight export, you'll notice that like what I'm calling a static export, you can very simply export four images. One, two, don't know why those opened in two windows, but whatever, three and four. So one, two, three, four. Let me show you what that looks like in a movie, in a video, because I think that's actually kind of cooler. So this is basically what you call, what I'm calling a build up or a fade up animation. We already did our section up animation. So let's press play on this. You can see that what it's doing is um, starting with the ground floor and then it's building up my furnishing elements. And finally, it's building up my architecture. Now, those cross dissolves that you saw there, 
I actually exported those as th four images. And then in a video editing program, I just overlapped those images so that you could get that cross dissolve. So that's one thing. That's the one thing that SketchUp doesn't do natively. So what I did is I, I'll export those as just images. And then in the video program, you can do that cross dissolve. Super simple technique. You don't have to be a video pro to know how to do that. Of course, you don't need that cross dissolve, but I like it because it shows that it's sort of like almost like it's revealing itself, you know, uh, rather than just like, bam, it's there if you didn't have that cross dissolve. So that's method number two. Now let's close those and let's look at method number three. Now I did that same thing. I did that same, um, in this case, animation where I rotated around. But one thing I did is I went into my styles and I turned section cuts off and I updated it. So watch what happens when you do that same animation now, like from the start to the finish, that kind of slow rotation. I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. I really like the dynamicness of the camera movement but I really liked the sort of subtlety of the fading of the sort of each of the individual elements, right? So remember deck, furnishing, and buildings. So what I did was basically come over here and then just start with, uh, whoop, did it out of order again, start with just the deck, come up here and go file, export animation. So I actually exported three animations. Now pro tip, always double check, um, always double check in your options menu what the frame rate is. So in this case, I want 24 frames per second. And if I know it's a 10 second animation, it's going to mean that this animation export is going to basically generate 240 frames. Not that you need to know that. You can make it whatever you want it to be. But just the point is, is always double check that frame rate, of course, because that's going to control how smooth it is, or it might control your speed, depending on what your, um, if you go under model info, right? It also has to do with what your transition time is between scenes. So that said, I would export this animation. So this one camera path using only the deck. And then I would do another camera pass of the deck and the furnishings. And then I would do one more animation export of that same camera path, basically from start to end with the buildings, right? So you end up doing three separate animations. I know that sounds like a lot of work, but it only takes a couple minutes to do each one. So it doesn't really bother me too much to have to do that three times. And then if we look at the finished product now, so I'm going to do this one here. Basically, this is a buildup using my scenes. So I did that exact same buildup that I did on the static image, but because I'm using scenes, I can get a camera movement as well. So watch, there's the camera movement. Get that cross dissolve fade that I did in a video editor because I have three different ones. And then you can see, finally, I get my architecture that fades on top. And I faded it back to white on purpose because I thought if I was going to make this as a GIF or a looping animation or something like that, then you want to do that sort of fade to white. I'll give you an example here. I've got this same one, but I've got that same animation and I've got it as a GIF. So you can just export MP4 um, to GIF. And the cool thing about having this little looping animation as a GIF is that it's something that's really now easy to embed into a website. So for example, if I was sending out an email blog or if I was posting it to a forum or something like that, oftentimes GIFs are file, smaller in file size, they play automatically, and they may be just more responsive as far as how it fits into your, your web template than what you would find um, with, it, like with a movie file, which sometimes the user has to press play. So that's... Uh, that's the one that I, I kind of like the most. Of course, if you go back and just one more time, turn my section cuts on, update my style. Um, of course, the fastest way to do it is literally going back to that first method that I showed you, which is gets that sort of camera movement and it gets that reveal, but it's doing it with these section cuts. It's almost like a little uh, cheat. So you only have to export one animation rather than three the way that I just did um, with this last one. So that's it for my build up three different ways. Again, just to recap, you can use sections, you can use static images, or you can use scenes and scene transitions to export an animation, which in then which case you can layer each of those on top of each other. You can cross dissolve them, you can mask them, clip them, add other things like titles. You can get fancy, you can get crazy, or you can keep it super, super simple. But I like this phased building approach. I like the how dynamic it is, and I like that it allows me to sort of control or reveal information 
um, instead of just giving you the design all at once. So I'm going to stop there. I'm going to say, if you haven't tried either of these methods, pick one of them, at least the one that you think works for your project or one you think is easiest or whatever, and give it a shot. Um, if you have any questions about how I, um, how I do cross dissolves, what video editors, anything that's sort of non SketchUp related, of course, post those in the chat below. And I would love to keep that conversation going there. And with that, I'm going to say thanks as always for watching, and I will see you next time.